Good evening, everybody. It is 5.40-ish, 5.40-ish on Friday, July, what is it, the 19th? July 19th. And I have to say that uh, things are afoot. Let's just get to it. Look, hey, I finally got the court mojo. And this, this video is just a recounting of what happened. Why? Because I think that this is vastly interesting about how things break down in the chain of custody, meaning from one person to another until the item actually arrives. So sit back and relax and just laugh at my misfortune for a few moments. So I purchased the Court Mojo last week, and the reason I purchased it is because everybody keeps talking about the Court Mojo. And about two months ago, I had the opportunity to buy a Court Mojo for about $325 or so, which is at least $100 less than where what other people on eBay are selling the Mojo for. So the Mojo currently goes for anywhere between $450 to $499, which is the MSRP. And it's not coming down. Every once in a while, somebody will just want to offload one of these things and we'll do it for a little bit cheaper. And I just didn't buy it a couple of months ago. Since then, I've been thinking about the Mojo and, you know, people keep saying the Mojo is fantastic and it keeps coming up in conversations. And I figured, look, you know, if it's that good, maybe it is worth having in conjunction with all the other stuff that I have. So I finally was able to find the Mojo for a similar price, actually a little bit cheaper. And there was good communication between me and the seller. I had asked him questions. He had responded. We had negotiated that he would ship immediately after payment. And I paid that very day and blah, 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 blah. So everything was set up. Everything was fine. He did ship it. He gave me a tracking number. And USPS, 24 hours after it was shipped, updates me and says, it's going to be delivered on the 15th, which was Monday of this week. And I waited and I waited and I didn't get it. And I checked the USPS's website and it said, it's delayed in transit. It's still on the way. And I said, okay, whatever. It's coming from the East Coast in the United States. At some point, it'll get here. Not a big deal. A couple of days pass and the 17th comes and I checked the tracking information. And all of a sudden it says, it's out for delivery today. Oh, great. No problem. I show up and I check my mail in the afternoon on the 17th. I have three packages. I opened all three of them. I thought, well, great, I got them. It, I was expecting one package that day, which was the Mojo. Three packages showed up that were supposed to ar arrive on Thursday and Friday. So those three somehow magically appeared where the tracking information said that they were going to appear on Thursday and Friday. Fine, no big deal. I open the packages, the mojo is not there. I go on the tracking website immediately and it says delivered. I go, where was it delivered? And it says on the tracking website, delivered to an individual at the address. What the hell does that mean? What does it mean when the website says delivered to an individual at the address? Which individual received this? It wasn't me. So I went to my neighbors and I went to people around and I said, hey, did you happened to get this package. They all said, no, we didn't get any package. It, it wouldn't come to us. And I looked around my place and didn't find it anywhere. It wasn't in the front porch. It wasn't in the back. It wasn't the neighbor's house. It wasn't uh, anywhere. Anywhere. It wasn't even at the entrance to where I live. And where was it? So I delved deeper into the website, the USPS website. And it said it was scanned at 7 o'clock. And then it went to sorting at 8 o'clock. And then it was out for delivery at about 8.40, and it was delivered at 9.58. Well, I checked the other three packages. Now, remember, I said three other packages arrived. So I checked the tracking information on those three other packages, and it showed that those three other packages were actually delivered at 11 o'clock. So an hour gap. It is not possible <clears throat> for the male person to come to my place, drop off one package, leave and then come back an hour later and drop off the other three packages. That's not how it works. They all It's not efficient that way. So something happened. That package got dropped off in the wrong place. So I immediately contact the seller and I say, hey, look, this is the situation. Could you please open up a request with USPS to track this down? I will do likewise, but since you are the shipper, you are required to do it so that at least we're both covered and you get your money and I get my money if case, in case we can't get this shipment. He doesn't respond. 
I contact USPS immediately and nobody picks up the phone. That's how the United States Postal Service works. You see, they have a 1-800 number. You call that 1-800 number and you have to go through this ridiculous automated system. The worst I have ever experienced. Bar none, the worst ever. Because here's one of the things you have to do. You have to input the tracking number. Now, that doesn't sound like it's a problem because every other website like USPS, UPS, FedEx, OnTrack, whatever, any, every other mail carrying service, when you call their number about a, about a shipment, they will ask you, give us a tracking number. That's standard. What is not standard is that you have to key press the numbers into the phone. It does not accept audible responses. Okay? So here's the thing. The numbers that you have to put in, it requires touch Pad, meaning you have to press it in here how can I do that if I'm on my cell phone and that tracking number is on a website so I have to close my phone app I have to go to the tracking number I have to quickly jot down the numbers go back to my phone app and then do you see how ridiculous that is that was frustration one then after it tells me it was delivered which it wasn't it said would you like to take a survey I don't want to take a survey I, why would I want to take a survey until my problem is solved? So I say, give me the operator. Because I figure at this point, it would have an audible response. No, 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 no. It doesn't want to hear the question, can I please have the operator? Instead, it says, would you like to go back to the main menu? I don't want to go back to the main menu. You know, what I do want to do is talk to a human being for a change. Can I talk to somebody? I press zero multiple times on the keypad. Zero, 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 zero. Usually, when you hit zero multiple times... The machine knows on the other end, this idiot wants to talk to a human being. I'll just forward this along because this is not working out. No, the USPS computers or the system, whatever they've set up, says, no, no, no. We're going to totally ignore that input and we're going to demand that you instead fill out either the uh, complete the, the, the questionnaire that we are going to ask you to do or number two, go back to the main menu and start the whole process again out of sheer frustration, I had to get to a, a human being by entering in, I wanted to buy stamps. Finally, see, that's the thing. When you want to pay them money, they will have you speak to a person. So finally, I get to somebody who is supposed to sell you stamps, and I say, I have a tracking problem. Could you please send me to somebody who deals with that? They said, sure. Lo and behold, they do have somebody who deals with tracking problems. So I go to this person, and I tell them what the situation is, and they say, well, according to our system, this shows that it was delivered. To which I responded, really? Could you tell me to whom it was delivered? They said, well, no, we can't. Maybe you should go to the local post office and talk to them. Unfortunately, my local post office is open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2 p.m. when people are, I don't know, at work. Who gets off at work at 1 o'clock to be able to go and speak to the USPS office at two, by 2 o'clock? And some of us don't really have enough time to take lunch. Okay, deep breath, deep breath. I will figure this out. So the following day, which was the 18th, yesterday, I go to the USPS office. I leave work early. And I demand to talk to somebody, and I wait in line, and I wait in line. And as you wait in line for something that you feel is very important, and somebody in front of you is just seemingly taking too long, anger boils. And so my anger was boiling inside, and I was trying to keep it under control. Because if I commit any sort of crime on federal property, and the United States Post Postal Service is federal property, I will be indicted for a federal crime. So I have to be very careful about what I say and how I say it. Finally, I approach this window and I say to the gentleman, look, here's the situation. Here's the problem. He says, oh, okay. Why don't you come over to this other window and we will talk. Mind you, let me put into perspective exactly where this office was. It's a rinky-dink office. Now, if you don't know what a rinky-dink means, it's an American phrase. Rinky-dink means that it's, it's like a circus. It is haphazard. It is sloppy. It is disheveled. It is a place that you would not typically conduct business. Okay? Got a picture? You walk into this building that has a front lobby that is probably eight feet long by three feet wide. You have that? Eight feet long by three feet wide. And in that space, they have two windows. That's not a whole lot of room for people to stand and wait in line. Lo and behold, that's where I was. Furthermore, these windows are simply doors, half doors, right? So you can open up the top part, 
and the bottom part will still stay closed. That's what their windows were. And when you open the window, you have total viewing access to everything that's going on in the back, which is entirely a warehouse. And when this person opened up the second window and allowed me to peer inside behind that magic curtain, I realized that the USPS is a circus. Do you know why? Because there were packages strewn around everywhere, everywhere, on the floor, on shelves, unmarked, pieces of paper, scrap paper, just pasted on to large wooden pallets and overwritten, scratched off and written on top again. And I said to myself, I, what, there is no way on this planet that these people are going to be able to find my package. If this is how they run their office, we are screwed. Do you understand what I'm thinking? What I'm thinking at that very moment, what's going through my mind? Not only was I royally pissed off that the seller would not respond, I was also royally pissed off that I was in an 8 by 3 room. And then on top of that, once peering into the background of what the USPS is capable of doing, I was disheartened. My entire life was falling around me, falling apart around me. So I took a deep breath and I said to this person, Can you please tell me where this package was delivered? He goes on the website, Read me the tracking number. Oh, Thank God. Finally, I can read the tracking number. I'm surprised you didn't want me to punch it in for you somewhere. Great. I read him the tracking number. He punches it in. He says, it looks like it was delivered. What part of it wasn't delivered do you people not understand? It wasn't delivered, not to me. It was delivered to somebody. Now, who that person is, it's beyond me. Well, it says it was delivered to an individual. It's like, not me. It wasn't me. I am not the individual. Well, it says it was delivered to the address. What's your address? I gave him my address. Well, that's what it says they were shipped to. I said, I understand that's where it was said it was shipped to, but it wasn't actually delivered to that address. Would you mind telling me where it was delivered? Well, let's see where it was scanned. We have GPS trackers. And I was crossing my finger at this point because I had already done some research about this type of issue online the day prior. That night, I was so irritated that I went online and I tried to figure out what is the process for USPS to track down an item that has been missing. And one of the things that came up is USPS scans every item that is delivered. And when it's delivered, it's scanned and the scanning information is uploaded via G GPS locator. So the office knows where exactly that item was when it was scanned by GPS. And I was hoping that was going to happen, but the problem is some USPS offices don't have GPS location, so they don't even have that information. This could have been one of those offices, but it wasn't. Luckily, he was able to pull up the GPS tracker information. He goes, well, this is strange. It says this other address. He gives me the address, which he's not really supposed to do, but he gives me the address anyway. There's this other address where it was delivered to. Uh, where do you live again? And I told him, he goes, huh, that's not this address. It, exactly, it's not this address. So would you mind getting the, the package for me? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll write down your phone number and I'll have my supervisor take a look at it and uh, we'll call you back. I said, fine, call me back. I hope that you can fix this for me today. Oh, no problem. He goes and gets his supervisor. His supervisor wanders over very nonchalantly as if there's no care in the world because we work at the USPS and, hey, if we get our job done to a modicum degree, that's sufficient. He comes up to me and he says, hmm, well, it says that it was delivered. I swear to God, we had the same conversation again. Finally, he understood what the issue was and he said, I will call you. Good. Thank you. I went home feeling a little bit relieved. But then I realized I can't just leave it at this. I have no faith in the USPS. I had just witnessed a massacre. Behind that veil, behind that door, was a whole field of murdered boxes that would never get delivered. It was clear to me. And I don't know if one of my boxes was back there. So I contacted e eBay and I put in a notice that I wanted to file a claim for an item not received. Well, eBay said, sure, no problem. We will do that for you. We will initiate that for you, and we'll give the seller five days to respond. I said, fantastic, because he hasn't responded to me yet. Well, the seller responds within a couple of hours of receiving an eBay message saying, hey, 
this is the situation, take care of it. And he says, well, the tracking service says that it was delivered, and I trust USPS. I kid you not, 15 minutes after he submitted that response, eBay said, we're closing your case. Are you kidding me? The tracking information is wrong. I have the specific information for you, eBay. I told it to you on the phone when we spoke that, one, it was misdelivered. Two, the process that I took to find out it was misdelivered. Three, the address that it was delivered to. Four, the GPS location information was verified. And five, I actually spoke to a human being at the USPS office who confirmed all of this. What more do you need? Oh, and by the way, there is a case number with the USPS. Can you understand this? There's a case number. I, I asked them to generate a case number so that there was proof that there was something wrong. The person on the phone on eBay said, you know what? I actually do have that case number. It's linked to our account. Fantastic. You have the case number. No problem. As soon as the seller says, eh, it was delivered, eBay says, okay, good enough for us. Now imagine. Let's take a step back. Take a deep breath. Just imagine for a moment how that might make you feel. Having purchased an item that is expensive to you and not getting it, then trying to be reasonable and asking the seller to help you because there is an issue and the seller ignores you. Then you trying to run around for days asking, begging people who are in charge of delivering this package to do something and not getting a straight answer and then going to the next level because you have no other choice and demanding a refund from eBay and eBay had seemingly agreeing that there is an issue and then immediately turns around and says go screw yourself we're just the middleman we don't really care in that moment I had a feeling of rage of such intense rage that I could barely control my anger. And here's why. I've had an opportunity to reflect on this, and, and here's the problem. I fault eBay 100%. It wasn't the seller's fault that USPS screwed up. It was definitely USPS's fault that they screwed up, but it's also eBay's fault because of the following statement they made to me. We are only the middleman. You're not just the middleman, eBay. You take money every time a sale is made. You have a guarantee on your website that I'm supposed to receive that package. And as the buyer, I am the only reason you make money, my friends. If I don't buy, you don't make no money. If nobody buys nothing from eBay, you assholes make zero, zero money. And so it's not the seller that you should be worried about. You should be worried about the buyer, particularly since me, in my specific instance, I have spent a lot of money on eBay. And I have had a stellar history on eBay since 2006, 100%. Not a single jot or tittle or any even impression that I have something wrong with my account or that I am untrustworthy or a liar. Not once. And you treat me, eBay, as if I'm a scammer. You treat a buyer as if the buyer has no rights whatsoever. I'm just the middleman. Ah, you're just the middleman, are you? How unfortunate for the rest of us. I blame eBay. Now, I said I blame eBay 100%, that is true, but I'm going to say that there's 120% of blame to go around because this is my story. And that 20% that's remaining actually falls upon the seller. As a seller, you have an obligation, not only ethically, but legally as a binding contract, you asshole. You have an obligation to make sure that the, that the buyer is satisfied that the buyer actually receives the product. And when I say I didn't get it and I provide you specific information as to why I'm saying I didn't get it and you ignore me, you are a piece of shit. And you will never get my money again. And you are definitely going to get a negative response on eBay just for that, for ignoring me, for the buyer. Okay?
Now, we haven't even finished the story yet, but I wanted to take that slight digression because it was on my mind. I wanted to get that off my chest. But do you understand what I was feeling at that moment, that rage, when eBay said, we're just the middleman? And so it was up to me. I had to do whatever it was possible for me to do to get this package. You know what I did? I looked on Google, Google Maps, what that address is, the address where it was actually delivered to. It turned out it's several businesses, so I started calling those businesses. Okay, I called those businesses and I said, hey, look, have you received a package? The first business I called, they said, we didn't receive any package, sorry. Then I called the next business. They said, we, we didn't receive any package, but you know what? I'll go check around with the neighbors. I'll let you know. Great. I wait a couple of hours. No response. So I call back and I asked them again. They said, oh, you know what? Sorry, we haven't seen anything. Okay. So I called the next one. They don't pick up the phone. So I called the next one. They said they haven't heard anything. They haven't received anything. Oh, there was a missing package here last week. But that could, could that have been mine? No. No. It was two days ago. It wasn't last week. But I appreciate you letting me know that this happens often. Then, today, I had a mission. I was going to get to the bottom of this, and I was not going to allow USPS to dictate how this was going to happen. So I showed back up to the USPS office this afternoon, and I said, where's my package? I met the same guy who helped me initially. I said, where's my package? And he says, I remember you. I said, you should remember me. I was just here yesterday. Yeah, well, uh, give me the number again. Great. We went through the whole process once again. He said, well, let me get my supervisor. Same supervisor comes back. He says, weren't you here yesterday? Yeah, I was here yesterday. Well, you know, they've only given us a couple of days to find this package. To which I responded, that's more than enough time because it's one package. And I told you yesterday, immediately after I found that it was missing. So find my package. Well, you know, uh, I can call the mail person. I said, please do. He picks up his cell phone, calls the mail person, explains the situation. And she says, the carrier, the mail person says, okay, I, I'm going to go back to that address and try to find it. I said, great, thank you. I appreciate somebody actually physically going over there with a uniform and saying, we need to get this package back. Somebody with some authority, at least. I then ask the supervisor, what's the process if you guys can't find the package? And he said, well, uh, you can try to file a claim. I said, I'm, the, I'm the, the receiver. I'm the buyer of this product. Can I file a claim? He goes, oh, no, you can't file a claim. I said, why can't I file a claim? Well, you need to have the receipt that it was actually shipped. I said, I have the tracking number. You have my information. Like It was being shipped to me. You know the where it was being shipped from. He goes, that's not how the system works. Only the seller can initiate a claim for a refund. It's insured up to $500, but only a seller can do that. I said, you confirmed repeatedly that this package was misdelivered. Yes. You confirmed that it wasn't my fault. Yes. You confirmed the GPS location that your carrier made a mistake. Yes. And if you find out that you can't find the package, it's my fault that now I can't, don't, both don't have the package and also I have to lose out on the money that I paid. Well, if you contact the seller, he responds, if you contact the seller they might be able to file the claim for you. I said, that's the problem. I contacted the seller yesterday. He ignored me, and now eBay got involved, and they ignored me. I need you to fix this. You, Mr. Manager, because you're the manager, fix it. If this product is not found, if you guys don't find it, you lost it, I want a refund. They said, well, I guess I could give you a piece of paper that says that, that it was lost. I said, great. Why don't you do that for me right now? Well, I can't really give you a piece of paper. I kid you not. This is what he said. I can't really give you a piece of paper. I said, you just told me you could give me a piece of paper. Well, I know, but I can't really give you a document. I said, what about the printout that you have in your hand? The one that says that the GPS location where it was scanned, which is not my house. Well, we can't even share that with you. We were really supposed to share that with you. He whispers to me. Imagine this. He leans forward a little bit and goes we are not really supposed to share the GPS location information with you, so we've done more than we were really supposed to. Oh, no shit, Sherlock. You certainly did do more than you were supposed to. You misdelivered to the wrong address. That was not part of your deal. To which I said, can you give me... I was thinking of this in my head, obviously. I responded instead, 
Remember, this is a federal office, so if I say anything remotely criminal, I will get arrested and I will face some sort of indictment in a federal court. To which I responded instead, well, can't you give me something in writing that says that this was misdelivered? He says, no, I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do that? You misdelivered it. No, I, I know, but I can't really put that in writing. Well, what can you put in writing? Well, I can put in writing that there was a case number that was opened and we're locating the package. And I said, no, no, no. If you don't find the package, you're not locating it because there's no more location. You've lost it. And he goes, well, we haven't reached that bridge yet. I said, I understand we haven't reached it yet. I just want to have a plan in place for when you don't find it. Well, when we cross that bridge, we'll cross it. I turned around. I thanked him, obviously, for his tremendous help. I turned around and I walked out of that office this afternoon and I said to myself, I am living in a weird dimension. None of this makes sense. I am surrounded by idiots. I am surrounded by people who are incapable of, of logic. The seller is an asshole. eBay were total assholes. And USPS, the only reason, and, and just bear with me here, the only reason that guy said, I can't give you a piece of paper, is because he doesn't want numbers, his numbers to go down. It reflects poorly. Every time there's a misdelivered package, it goes to USPS's auditing service. And every office, every post office that is missing packages gets audited if they reach a certain number or if they have a certain consistency to missing packages. That's why. He didn't want to put it in writing. It was This was all very informal. And I thought, I'm the only person here who did nothing. I did nothing except pay the money. I only paid the money and I'm the one getting screwed. How would you react in this situation? I ask you. What would you do? Would you sit back and say, ah, oh, c'est la vie. That is life. And would you be like Yoda? Would you say, mm, life that is. Mm, be peaceful in the force you must. Is that what you would say? Or would you instead put on Darth Vader's mask and walk around and try to stab people with your lightsaber? That's what I was feeling like, I have to be honest. So I drive home, and I'm angry. I get the dogs, and I figure, you know what? I, I need to get back to work. I need to put my mind to do something else. And I take the dogs and drop them off at, at dog daycare. And as I'm dropping them off, I get a phone call. And I pick up the phone. I don't recognize the number. And the person on the line is the mail carrier. And she says... Oh, look, you know, I, I just went back to the address, this address where I misdelivered it, and I found it. I found the package. I thought, oh, thank God. And she goes, yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, the, the people who, who took the package a couple of days ago, they, they tore open the box and they threw the box away. So I don't have the box anymore. I only have this package. And, and it says Cord Mojo. Is that what it is? I said, yes, it is the Cord Mojo. I said, thank you so much for doing that. I was so relieved. I said, could you possibly please just deliver it to me today? She goes, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll drop it by in a couple of hours. You'll have it in your mailbox. I'm so sorry. She was very apologetic about this. I said, great. Thank you so much. Lo and behold, I show up at 4 o'clock, and there it is. It's in my mailbox. It's in its box. There's no shipping box. I open it. I look at it. It seems like it's in good condition. I plug it into my computer. The computer immediately recognizes it as the mojo. I plug in my headphones. I play some music. It works. Okay. Ah, uh, I have never, I have never had such a bad buying experience. I've had bad buying experiences. I've had bad selling experiences, but this is the worst. I have sold items like really expensive stuff on Amazon and shipped it by USPS and they have lost the package and they have refused to help me. I, and that's happened twice now. I have not received a package twice. I have not 
been able to deliver a package and then lost money and the item twice, and I have not received a package twice. This was going to be the third time. And for all intents and purposes, it was the third time. But it's here. After all of that trouble and angst and frustration and anger and rage and wanting to gouge somebody's eyeballs out, the court mojo has arrived. And you know what? This thing better be worth it. Because if this thing is not stellar, I am going to sell this goddamn thing and it is never, ever going to be mentioned again. Also, note to the wise, when you buy a Cord Mojo, you need to buy an accessory kit. Yes, you do. Because the only thing that Cord includes in the package is a very teeny, tiny, about two inch long USB cable. Ah, uh, fantastic. You need to spend an additional $100 to buy a Cord Mojo accessory kit that has an accessory dongle stuff and some sort of module that clicks into place. Thank you. Thank you, Cord. That's uh, very helpful. And by very helpful, I mean... I'm so done. I'm done. This was 31 minutes of me ranting about this experience. I know. I have Look, hey, this is this I hope this was a more interesting rant than the other sh stuff that I've done. And uh some of you might find some pleasure in my misfortune. It's okay. You can laugh at it. I I too will laugh at this at some point. Not now, but eventually because I finally have the product. Oh. That was frustrating. If you have a story about USPS or FedEx or UPS or any other delivery service that screwed you over, hey, tell me about it. In fact, tell me the last time a seller or a buyer on eBay or Amazon or some other service screwed you over. Because I, I, I'm of the opinion that the USPS is totally useless. It's worthless. It should all be privatized. USPS, go away. I would rather have UPS and FedEx deliver my packages because even when they misdeliver and every once in a while they do, they have a strict policy of helping you find it or, or giving you your money back, even if you're the buyer. All right, I'm done. I'm going to go have dinner. I'm going to a friend's house. I'm going to have dinner. I'm going to forget all this nonsense and I'm going to move forward. I hope that some of you found this entertaining because, Frank, I, I, this was not helpful for me. This was not a good experience for me. And what did I learn? Nothing. I learned nothing except how much rage people can induce in me when they do the wrong thing. And there were several people who did the wrong thing here. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully this was entertaining, like I said. Uh, what's up next? Well, I can't do the Court Mojo stuff yet until I get the accessory kit. And I found it really cheap uh, on yeah you're right on ebay yeah that's right i found it really cheap on ebay and it's being shipped from japan uh with free shipping so you know i'm saving 40 bucks it'll get here when it gets here it, or not right we'll see uh and then i'll be able to actually do a thorough review because i want to be able to have the options to connect to various things before i start the review process and Farsi Allo Audio, still stuck in customs. Hey, here we go. This might be number four that I don't get. Thank you, USPS, for all your mediocre work. Have a wonderful Friday night at 6.12. I'm going to get dressed and go have dinner. And you guys have a fantastic Friday. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful, beautiful, great night.